begins today with David Matley. Hello and welcome to the program here at I-24 News, brought to you from the Jaffa Port in Israel. Well, with us now in the studio tonight is Amir Oren, defense and government analyst, and Professor Emmanuel Navon, a uh, specialist from Tel Aviv University in uh, international relations. Well, thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Uh, first of all, Professor Navon, how much substance is there to this concept now of early elections? I think it's uh, pretty real. I mean, Netanyahu already uh, had meetings with the uh, leaders of his own Likud party. Uh, he announced, actually, that he would like to have the uh, primary elections for the chairmanship of Likud uh, to take place within a month. Uh, that's what he wants to do. He said it clearly. Uh, there are many people in Likud who don't agree with that, including uh, Danny Danon, the former deputy defense minister, who is also the chairman of the Central Committee, who said that it was too early. Uh, also, his uh, likely contender, Moshe Feiglin, also from the Likud, who also said that he thought it was too early. So, I mean, they're already talking and negotiating a date uh, for early uh, elections for the uh, chairmanship of the Likud. And, of course, if Netanyahu is thinking of early elections for the chairmanship of the Likud, it means he's only also thinking of early elections uh, for the Knesset. Many have said that this coalition now in the government is one that Netanyahu didn't necessarily want, uh, that he was drawn into by the election results now. How functional of a coalition do you think this has been? Less than the previous one. Uh, mostly because the previous one was more of a natural coalition uh, for Netanyahu, uh, including the ultra-Orthodox uh, uh, parties. In the present coalition, uh, his coalition partner, Yair Lapid, demanded the exclusion of the Orthodox uh, parties. Don't forget also that Lapid today technically has more MKs in the Knesset than Netanyahu himself. Uh, because of this very con counterproductive ag agreement that Netanyahu signed with Lieberman before the previous elections, uh, for reasons that we don't have time to here to explain, but he's ending up today with 18 MKs when Lapid has 19, so he doesn't like that situation. Uh, and uh, I, I think mostly he realizes that his coalition today, uh, there's so many disagreements between uh, the coalition members, and when he looks at the polls today, he figures out that Lapid would lose many of his uh, voters, so it would be more comfortable for Netanyahu to replace Lapid with Moshe Kahlon, no, no great challenger. Also, but it would be more comfortable for him to reintroduce the ultra the ultra orthodox parties into his coalition and simply replace Lapid with, with Moshe Kahlon, who would have likely something between eight or ten MKs and uh, who would be um, more uh, cooperative than uh, than Lapid. Do you feel election results will be much different today than they were in the previous election? I don't think so. I think that what's going to to happen is there's going to be simply a, a shift between the old parties or recent parties and new ones. I think most of what's going to happen is that, you know, every election in Israel, you always have this uh, new party who promises so much and people get so excited, and then they realize after a couple of months that it's more of the same. Does in the last election. Exactly. So I'm talking about Lapid, for example, and then people realize after two or three months that it's been more of the same. Uh, and so Lapid is a victim of this phenomenon. So especially because his whole platform was economic and social issues and people realize how little he's been Achieving or willing to achieve? Is there any chance that his party Yeshati could achieve the success that they had? Not at all. No, election. he's going to he's going to lose at least half of his uh, of his mandates at the Knesset, and most of them are going to go to Moshe Kahlon. So it's really only a transfer of votes from one party to the other. But the basic structure of the political map. And this is why I am very doubtful that uh, that uh, there would be a majority for the left or the central left, whether or not President Rivlin asked uh, M.K. Herzog, member of Knesset Herzog, to form a government. I mean, at the end of the day, you need a coalition. So I think there will still be a majority uh, for the right and the center right. Uh, there will just be a, a change, a transfer of votes from certain parties to others. There seems to be a rift now between Netanyahu and Lieberman. What's his role going forward? Very clearly. Don't forget that Lieberman used to be not only the chief of staff of Netanyahu, but he was also, he started his political career as a member of Likud and his own party, uh, uh, Israel Betenu, is basically a spin-off of Likud based on the Russian-speaking uh, uh, voters. Now, Lieberman hoped in the last elections, before the last elections, to re-enter the Likud by the back door. It didn't work out that way. His plan was to merger with Likud, to try and run for the leadership. Try to get a bigger base. Exactly, and it didn't but he work. he lost a lot of his base. Exactly, so that didn't work. So Lieberman realize, realizes today that he's not going to be the head of Likud, and he knows that to be prime minister in Israel, you have to be either head of Likud or head of, or head of labor. So his chances of becoming prime minister don't look good, and therefore he still has, he has once again, to differentiate himself 
from Likud by sounding by sounding more secular and more hawkish on security issues, and that's basically his uh, his strategy today. I think his goal today is to maintain his political strength around 12 or 15 MKs, uh, but I think his hopes of becoming prime minister, since he lost his bet on the Likud, are basically zero. What's the future for the Labour Party and the opposition at large? They've been really pushed to the side more than in previous governments. Well, first of all, I don't think it's healthy for Israeli democracy to have a weak opposition. But the problem of the Labour Party is that for the past 20 years, instead of talking about economic and social issues, it's been focusing on a failing idea, which is the Oslo process. And we just talked about Ehud Barak. Don't forget that Ehud Barak at Camp David uh, proposed what he proposed, and we know the result. And the, uh, the left wing or the center left wing electorate was shocked. Uh, disappointed by the theory of Oslo. And instead of talking about the economy, uh, the Labour Party has been insisting on, uh, on, uh, on talking and trying to market uh, this uh, failed uh, idea of Oslo. Well, so that's Justice Minister Tsipi leaving now, does she play a role potentially with the Labour Party? Well, I think she could join it, but I, I also think that one of the problems of the Labour Party is that it's another it's another paradox of Israeli politics. We just talked about Shimon Peres when Shimon Peres was uh, uh, was Prime Minister in the mid eighties. He's the one who uh, who implemented the Thatcher Revolution in Israel, and that's another problem of the Labour Party is that economic liberalisation in Israel was always more uh, the, uh, the the actual deal of the Labour Party much more than Likud. So the Labour Party basically led the liberalization of the economy in the 80s. It brought Israel to a dead end politically with the Oslo process, and it's paying for it. And I think it's about time that the Labour Party, in my opinion, should really focus on economic issues, because the platform of Likud is supposed to be economic liberalization, but Netanyahu has been doing very precious little uh, to liberalize the Israeli economy, to fight monopolies, and to lower the cost of living. Do you believe that the youth in Israel today still have faith in Netanyahu, or is there an emerging leader that that they'll back. I don't see today an emerging leader. I mean, look at the Yale Lapid, for example. He turned overnight from a TV anchor to a Minister of Finance. Uh, he doesn't even have a BA degree. So, you know, the, the, the problem with Israeli politics is that people who are really uh, quality people don't want to go into politics. And it's easy to understand why. Because when you see the, the amount of talent in Israel, in academia, in business, uh, in science, uh, I can't think of anybody in his right mind going into politics. And one of the reasons is that in Israel we do not have district elections. So a politician is just a party person and only has to uh, to be uh, responsible for his party and not for his electorate. So you do not have to deliver uh, to voters in order to advance into politics. You just have to have the favor of the head of the party or uh, of the party voters. And this does not encourage uh, equality people to go into politics. And therefore, uh, I think that Israel really needs, I don't think it's going to happen, but Israel really needs, in my opinion, to change uh, the voting system for the Knesset. Ben-Gurion himself wanted to do that, but even himself, he realized it was not possible. I think as long as Israel, Israel has this proportional electoral system where the whole country is a district, we're not going to attract people. Uh, Thank you very people. much, uh, Professor Manuel Nabon and Amir Owen.